So many leaders view culture as a touchy-feely, woo-woo, airy-fairy ideological concept. They see it as maybe a morale thing. I bet if we pulled 100 people in this room right now to describe their culture, they would talk about feelings. You might say something like, people feel good coming to work. Our culture is good. It feels like a family. Or you would say, my culture is a bad culture. People are disengaged. They don't like coming to work. Well, the secret is that culture is not about feelings. Culture is not soft. It is not unmeasurable, nor is it intangible. In fact, culture is a simple, hard skill. It's very measurable, and it's acutely tangible. If you want your business to succeed, if you want sustainable growth for your organization, your culture must support your goals. I'm going to boil down culture into a simple three-part formula, and this will allow you to measure your existing culture and then also give you a roadmap to create your ideal culture. And so my goal in creating the culture equation was to keep it simple. Strategy powered by your culture equals performance. Your outcomes are informed by your employees' behaviors. You are going to hit your targets if your employees behave in a way that aligns with your goals. So now the question is, what drives employee behaviors? And anyone who has taken an Econ 101 class knows that behavior is driven by incentives. So behavior in an organizational setting is all a result of systemic influencers. These are the foundation of your organization. I worked with a Silicon Valley tech company that had one product line that just wasn't hitting its targets as well as the other products in their portfolio. And what we did was we used our culture formula. We looked at what outcomes are we getting, what employee behaviors are leading to those outcomes, and what are the systemic influencers that are leading to those employee behaviors. And what they discovered was that while the strategy was calling for innovation, the culture or the environment really did not facilitate that kind of behavior. So we walked through the eight culture drivers to change the environment, change the culture, so that then we could get new behaviors out of the employees. And that absolutely accelerated their performance. So now we must ask ourselves, well, how will we know when we've succeeded in creating a culture that sustains our growth? Well, typically, culture is measured through employee engagement, and the higher the engagement, the better our culture is. I mean, that's what we've been told. Employee engagement is limiting in that it's only measuring the extent to which the employee fits within their role as a worker. What if it's time to abandon the antiquated notion of employee engagement and move towards a new measurement, which I'm going to be calling employee fulfillment? Employee fulfillment puts the human first again. It asks, to what extent are you fully developed in your abilities and your character? Do you feel whole? Can you feel whole here? Reach for that goal and employee turnover will plummet. Creating a culture that puts employee fulfillment first is going to be a culture that ultimately supports your strategy beyond any other.